I'm Dr. Larry Santora. Thanks for watching Heart, Health, and Home today. We're first going to hear from my co-host, Nikki Johnson. She's a, a Medicare insurance expert. Uh, and then we'll hear from Maria Sanchez. She's a real estate expert. Both of these industries have been severely affected by the uh, COVID pandemic. And then I'll talk about heart murmurs. Thank you for watching today. Hi, my name is Nikki Johnson, and I'm a health insurance agent that specializes in Medicare. Today, I'm gonna to talk about how to apply for Medicare Part B. This is if you're over 65 and you're just retiring, or you're losing employer coverage through you or a spouse, you'll wanna go ahead and go to your Google browser and Google Social Security Administration, or you can put in ssa.gov. Many of the Social Security field offices are currently closed, so they've moved a lot of their processes online. When you get to ssa.gov, you'll want to go to the homepage and click the link for Apply for Medicare Part B during a special enrollment period. There, you'll need to download and complete two forms. Your first form is the CMS 40B form. This is essentially your application for Medicare Part B. And a good tip is in the remarks section, go ahead and put when you want your coverage to start. If you want Medicare to start in October, you would put October 1st, 2020 as your effective Medicare Part B start date. The second form is the CMS L564 form. This L564 form is your employer request for coverage. Basically, the government wants to know when you first turned 65, what were you doing for health insurance coverage and why didn't you originally apply for Part B? You'll need your prior employer to sign this form and you'll need to upload evidence of coverage. Evidence of coverage can be things like a health insurance ID card with a policy effective date or you or your spouse's pay stub that shows the premium deductions that you paid for your health insurance coverage. These are just a couple of examples. Now, if for some reason during this time you cannot get your prior employer to sign it, fill out that section B of that L564 form to the best of your ability on behalf of your employer and go ahead and get the application sent in and submitted. Remember, in most circumstances, Medicare will not retroly, retroactively start your Medicare effective date, so you'll wanna get this application in as soon as possible. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to send me an email or give me a call at the number listed below. Until next time. Hi, I'm Mary Sanchez. I specialize in residential real estate here in Orange County. I am with Coldwell Banker. And today I'd like to talk about the top three biggest mistakes sellers make. Seller mistake number one, waiting until go time to call an agent. If you can't avoid it, try to call an agent well before you plan on moving. This way, you have the professional guidance on what items you need to prioritize to repair your house for sale and what items you don't need to spend your money on. Seller mistake number two, selling your house as a for sale by owner or hiring a discount broker. When you don't work with a real estate agent, you are passing up knowledge, experience, and network that helps sell your house faster and for more money. If your home is worth more than a million, and even if it's not, do you really trust a Walmart of real estate to get the most money for your most valuable asset? Realtors are not all created equal. Hire someone who is knowledgeable, who has a strategic marketing plan that's customized for your home, and someone with a sharp negotiating skills. If they don't negotiate their own fee, what makes you feel that they can negotiate the best items for the sale of your home? And lastly, not spending any money to get your home show ready. Even if you have a house that needs a little TLC, you'd be shocked to see what fresh paint, carpeting, staging, and switching out a few light fixtures can do to increase the value of your home bring multiple offers and sell your home faster. 
If you don't have the cash available to make improvements, hire a Coldwell Banker agent and utilize their amazing services at Coldwell Banker Concierge, where they will front you the funds and at no additional cost, all you have to do is pay it back at the close of escrow. You can contact me for more information on that. Knowledge is powerful and can save you time and money. I hope you found today of value. Let's connect and make it happen. I'm Dr. Larry Santora. Thanks for watching Heart Health and Home. You know, the COVID virus has many people frightened about their heart and this, that's understandable, but I think for the most part, you don't have to worry too much about your heart. We have great ways of uh, treating heart disease today, uh, but I get a lot of questions. And one of the ones that I get quite frequently is about heart murmurs. And now a patient called me and said he was had a uh, COVID and uh, his family doctor heard a new heart murmur and wanted to know if he needed to be evaluated. Well, let's explain what a heart murmur is. A heart murmur is essentially a sound that we hear with our stethoscope. So it's a swishing sound. It goes as we put the stethoscope over the heart. When there's turbulence as the blood goes from one chamber to the next, it makes a sound. And that sound is called a heart murmur. A heart murmur is not a symptom doesn't mean you have chest pain. It doesn't mean you're short of breath. It doesn't mean you pass out. It's a sound that we hear with the stethoscope. Now, some murmurs are due to a narrowed heart valve, a narrowing of a heart valve we call stenosis, and some uh, valves uh, are leaky. So those are leaky or insufficient valves. And we can tell by listening with our stethoscope the, the type of uh, valve problem that it is. Is it a leaky valve or is it a narrowed heart valve? However, to best quantitate it, we used to we use an echocardiogram or ultrasound test of the heart, and that will tell us how narrow the valve is, how much it leaks, uh, but a lot of heart murmurs are just normal blood flow through the chambers of the heart. It's just a normal flow of blood, and we call those innocent heart murmurs, and the vast majority of heart murmurs are innocent. Now, if you had COVID and you recovered from it and you're back to see your family doctor and he hears a new heart murmur, well, that definitely has to be uh, evaluated. And most likely it would be narrowing of your, or leakage of your mitral valve, because that is the one that can change more dramatically than any of the other valves. And when the mitral valve leaks, it makes a swishing sound that can go all the way into your back. It's over the uh, breast area and radiates into your back. We can follow that with our stethoscope and then we can quantitate it with the echocardiogram. Now, if the valve is leaking a lot, um, then we put you on medications that can cut down the leakage of the valve. And then if the valve continues to leak a lot, we have ways of fixing it uh, minimally invasively by putting a little catheter uh, through the leg and then going up and clipping the valve together. Uh, it's called a mitral valve clip. It's new technology, but it works very, very well. The other thing is if the valve starts to leak after uh, COVID, it could very well be that the uh, heart muscle got weakened from the virus. And when the heart muscle gets weakened, it tends to enlarge and then the valve starts to leak more. So it's very important to assess the heart function and the heart size after a COVID infection, especially if there's a new heart murmur to see if there's been damage to the, uh, the heart pumping action. In the vast majority of cases, there is none. Uh, but if it does happen, it's usually in those who have been hospitalized and have been very sick with the COVID virus. So a heart murmur should be checked out. Remember, heart murmur is not a symptom. It's a sound that we hear with the stethoscope. We have excellent ways of evaluating with our modern echocardiogram or ultrasound test. We have great ways of treating with some newer drugs that have come out that can cut down the leakage of the valve uh, dramatically. Uh, if the valve does need mechanical repair, we can fix it very easily by going through the leg and up to the valve and clipping it together. It's a non-invasive, it's a minimally invasive procedure, meaning we don't have to open the chest anymore. And we can normally get you back to normal life. So uh, heart murmurs are 
very common, um, usually they're benign, meaning they're innocent murmurs having nothing to do with a leaky or narrowed valve. It's just from the normal course of blood through the chambers. But if it's a pathological leakage or it's a narrowing of the valve, uh, we can also assess those and take care of those with minimal invasive uh, treatments. Often the symptoms due to a, a valve problem are shortness of breath uh, and less so uh, chest discomfort. So uh, thank you for watching today and uh, we will see you next week. We would like to send you uh, this book. It's a complimentary. It's a book that I wrote about coronary calcium screening, which is a way of picking up plaque or calcium in the coronary arteries. I think it is the most important test that we have in medicine today, and this book will explain the, the whole process. It also talks about other aspects of heart disease. Along with this book, we want to send you this cloth mask. They come in various colors. This is the one that I tend to uh, wear. It's very breathable and you can talk through it. You don't feel like you're smothering. It covers a lot of your face. It's washable. And we will send you one of these along with the book if you request it through hearthealthathome at yahoo.com. And also please uh, press our subscribe button. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next week. I'm Dr. Larry Santora and this is Heart, Health and Home.